How's it going DIY professionals? I'm Rodrigo Rivera. If you're watching this, you probably have a P04 code, which means you're having issues with your evaporative emission systems. So the question is, what is the next step? I'm partnering up with AutoLine Pro to provide you troubleshooting steps necessary to diagnose this system. Before we get started, however, if you're not familiar with the EVAP system, be sure to click on the link below to get a better understanding. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more DIY goodness. But enough for intros, let's get started. The first component that we're going to talk about in the troubleshooting step is the gas cap. The gas cap has a thread design and o-ring around its perimeter. The number one cause of the gas cap is it being defective. So always ensure that this o-ring is not damaged. Another cause of the gas cap not functioning right is just a person not tightening it appropriately. A lot of people are always in a hurry during fueling and they only give it one good turn, but they do not let the o-ring seat appropriately so fumes will escape and trigger a code. Sometimes it is just as easy as tightening the gas cap. And sometimes it is just as easy as replacing a really cheap part at the top rather than thinking of it being a huge issue. So always ensure when you check out the gas cap, ensure that the O-ring is still thick and showing its appropriate diameter. If the O-ring seems too flat, it's probably not holding its seal and it must be changed. Now our newer vehicles, the gas cap is completely removed. Instead of using the gas cap, they use a flap design with a return spring on it. The principles are still the same. There's a seal around that flap so ensure that the return spring of that one-way flap is sitting all the way. If the spring is worn out and it's not sitting all the way, there's probably fumes escaping from within that apparatus. The next component that we're going to talk about is the fuel tank within the vehicle. The fuel tank is usually located underneath the vehicle in the rear, but always check a database to ensure the location of the fuel tank. Now remember, the fuel tank is a storage unit of all the fuels. Fuel is very strong and volatile. So the fuel tank must be constructed of a material that's very durable to these elements. On older vehicles, fuel tanks were made out of steel, but on newer, newer vehicles, they're made out of PCV high density plastics. So one thing to be, keep an eye out on fuel tanks is ensure there is no road damage on them. While people are driving, sometimes materials or objects can be hit on the bottom. So ensure the fuel tank is not cracked at all. There are a couple hoses that enter the fuel tank, which could be the filler spout or the fuel pump assembly up on top. Ensure there are no signs of leakage or no signs of fumes. Always trust your nose when diagnosing the EVAP system. The next component that we'll be talking about is the purge valve. Remember, the purge valve is located underneath the hood by the intake manifold. Always check your database to ensure that this is the location of this component. Remove the purge valve. It's going to have two lines, one inlet, one outlet, and then a connector. It might have a 10 millimeter bolt or a couple more, but there's no complexity to it. Once the purge valve is removed, understand that the purge valve is always closed when naturally sitting. So when no voltage is applied to this apparatus, the valve should be sealed. You can check out the functionality of this purge valve by applying vacuum to it. But sometimes we don't have the money to afford that vacuum tool, so we can simply blow into it and ensure that it holds its seal. As you can see, we can hear air escaping from within this unit, which means the seal, seal inside here is damaged. Now, if the seal within the purge valve isn't damaged, we have to do a solenoid test. All we're gonna need is either a battery, a jumper, two wires to pass through the electricity into the apparatus. So I'm gonna charge my jumper to ensure I'm getting voltage to both these wires. Remember, the purge valve uses 12 volts to function. i am apply one pin, and with the other wire, I'm going carefully hit the other pin. Make sure you do not touch these two wires or you will produce a spark it might damage something. As we can see, as I apply voltage, we can hear a clicking sound, which means the solenoid inside is functioning appropriately, which means that this purge valve is functioning appropriately. This will ensure you that this purge valve is not bad and you should move to the next step in the troubleshooting process. Next, we're going to be testing the vent valve. As mentioned, the vent valve is an actuated solenoid. It's always open when not operated. So if we apply voltage, this should seal off. We're going to use a jumper to apply the voltage and two wires to carry out those voltage. Now that we have charge within this jumper, I'm going con to connect one of the pins to one of the pins in the connector. Once I have contact with the other pin, with the other wire, I'm going to touch the other pin within the connector. A solenoid should always make a clicking noise, but within this instance, there's no clicking happening, which means a solenoid inside this vent valve is defective. This means that this vent valve is inoperable and must be changed. The 
next component that we'll be talking about on the EVAP system are hoses and lines. The principles of the hoses and lines are always the same. They interconnect all the components so the fumes can get from point A to point B. So the main goal here is to ensure there is no damage to these hoses or lines. When it comes to steel lines, it's very rare for these to crack. Usually when you look at steel lines, you want to be looking at the joints where there might be soldering. These could be points of interest that could be damaged. Ensure that there is no seepage of fluids or smells. Always trust your nose and always trust your eyes with these kind of problems. Next, we have high density plastics. These are a lot more prone to break during vibrations. So keep eyes of cracks. Sometimes if you can remove the hose completely, you could blow into one side, seal off the other and see if air escapes. But always remember plastics are a lot more brittle than steel and they are more prone to damage. Lastly, we have rubber hoses. Rubber hoses are usually designed for more flexibility within the unit. These out of all can crack the most due to vibrations and flexibility. A good way to test a hose is flex it the opposite way of the angle. If you see any cracking, the hose is bad and there could be seepage of fumes within that unit. After performing the troubleshooting steps, if everything checks out and you still haven't found anything, you're probably gonna have to do a more thorough test. This is where a smoke test comes into play. Smoke particles are a lot more smaller and can seep out of leaks that normally a normal process troubleshooting can't find. This is where you're gonna need a smoke tester like the Ventus from AutoLine Pro. For more information on performing smoke tests on the evaporative emission systems, please click on the link box below. That's it for today, folks. I hope these troubleshooting steps really helped you guide on understanding the way the EVAP system works. Don't forget to follow AutoLine Pro for their great innovative tools at great affordable prices, including their flagship device, the Ventus Smoke Machine. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more DIY goodness to expand your world within the automotive industry. I'm Rodrigo Rivera, signing off.